something about your maternal ancestor. Recently, there has been an increased interest in hypothetical combats and theoretical wars between different species and governments. While not outside the purview of this channel, it does make it interesting since the writers of the Trek universe generally write for episodes or arcs, they're just trying to put a simple story together, not necessarily ensuring that the universe has consistency. They don't have Lore Runner on their staff, that's what I'm trying to say. An often requested conflict is between the United Federation of Planets and the Tholian Assembly. This is a little bit tricky because we don't have a ton of information on the Tholian Assembly itself. While they are mentioned throughout various series, ranging from Enterprise to DS9 and even in Discovery, they aren't explored all that much. But looking between the two governments, the Tholian Assembly is an expansive empire that spans tens, if not dozens, if not hundreds of star systems. We aren't aware of their hierarchy and can't be sure of their complete military abilities. We do know that the Assembly is usually seen operating wedge-shaped vessels that have a unique energy weapon and, when combined with other vessels, can create a web that doesn't allow other ships to fire out of but somehow the Tholian vessels are still able to fire into it. If this is an ability that only Tholian weapons can do, or if any other vessel can fire in, is unknown. The Tholian web also can be used to crush vessels or tow them to other places if need be. The Tholians, unlike other species, appear to be pretty reasonable and will attempt to render aid if possible. They are aggressively defensive of their territory, however, but not stupidly so. The Federation is a diverse conglomeration of multiple species spanning hundreds to thousands of light years. Their members have joined together for the mutual defense and the proliferation of peace and scientific research. Starfleet is both the scientific and militaristic arm of the Federation, providing assistance wherever and whenever needed. Because all of the sources that directly tell us the capabilities of the Tholians are in the 22nd and 23rd century, this is the era the war will occur. While there is a debate on Starfleet, we know that the 23rd century did have a military. They had military fleets. Are we talking about mothballing the Starfleet? Well, I'm sure that our exploration and scientific programs would be unaffected, Captain, but... I must protest! You can't exactly disband something that doesn't exist. So a military conflict between the powers is likely to occur. Unfortunately, we don't have a truly canon map. Historically, the map you see on screen has been considered to be semi-canon, and thanks to Star Trek Picard, at a minimum, some of it is definitively so. Again, at least to some extent. Based on that, this is the one we'll be using. According to the map itself, the Tholian Assembly is located right about here. Based on all of this information, this conflict is most likely going to be a border war of sorts. It's unlikely that all-out warfare involving the destruction of either side is a possibility. So let's look at the belligerents. Probably the largest advantage that the Tholian Assembly has is its location in the conflict. Effectively, it being centralized on this side where there would be far less a military presence of Starfleet. And Starfleet's military sources would most likely be located at the Romulan and Klingon border, a long way away. From what is seen on screen in every iteration, Starfleet weapons are generally on par or better than that of the Tholians. Another major advantage for Starfleet is physiology. Tholians are unable to exist outside of extreme temperatures while the species within the Federation can live in temperate locations with specific preferences but nothing that would hurt them physically. This means controlling and having colonies would be quite easy for the Federation, not so much for the Tholians. They'd have to rely on constructing bases or facilities that they could live in. How the conflict occurs is pretty easy to parse out though. Instead of the Tholians just letting it go that Starfleet vessels had wandered into their space, tensions would spiral out of control into a border war and clash. The Tholian assembly would likely be the first to strike and, while we're in the times of a much more pragmatic and intelligent Starfleet, the Federation's borders would be pushed back, possibly quite a bit. Starfleet would be scrambling to bring enough resistance to fight off the invaders. Again, the bulk of the battle fleet would be on the borders on the opposite side of the map. It would take years, probably a lot of them, for reinforcements to arrive. So in the short term, and likely the entire conflict, I doubt they're going to pull resources from those fronts, Starfleet would rely on what it had in the middle of their space as well at the Tholian border. Shipyards in the area would be tasked and go into overdrive with the construction of new facilities starting as well. 
Ultimately, the Federation would respond with enough force to halt any Tholian advance. The advance itself would probably be slow anyway, given that a Federation ship is able to disable multiple Tholian vessels at a time. In an even matchup, Starfleet technology does just seem superior. In order to win a sustained clash with the Federation, the Tholians would have to rely on subterfuge and trickery. The key goal for the Tholians would be to isolate Starfleet ships, which would allow them to create their web traps and defeat the vessel. Luckily for the Federation, it wouldn't be the 24th century Starfleet defending them. The more pragmatic Starfleet would eventually require ships to travel in pairs in an attempt to prevent these type of issues, and probably would be willing to cede space to ensure that their vessels don't get destroyed. That doesn't mean that some vessels might not find themselves alone. This situation could be due to colonies under attack, false calls for help, or actual requests for assistance. While it is possible other races would take advantage of the war, that seems unlikely. Again, the main fleets would stay to guard against the worst enemies of the Federation, so there's no real advantage to be gained. The problem with the war between the Tholians and the Federation is that it'd be bloody without either side gaining much. Starfleet would ultimately be able to push the Tholians back, and this would all just be a large stalemate. At best, the Tholians might gain some territory as the Federation would want to stop the fighting, and then a neutral zone would be established. It would harm future relations with the Tholians and possibly negatively isolate them as well. In the end, the return on investment for either side of a war would not be worth it. Honestly, given how reasonable both sides appear to be, I'm not convinced a prolonged war would even happen. But these are just my opinions. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next Lore Reloaded.